the truth is Jesus. Only the Father can draw us to Jesus, the Bible says. You can't come to Jesus unless the Father draws you. You're not going to be drawn. Many are not drawn. I've, I've been battling them. Now I need to talk about the return of the dead people. The return of the dead people in dreams is a part of the new attack. And the new attack is simply an old attack. But they make it look like it is without, but it's within. But you see, you don't know yet about what I'm about to tell you. The return of the dead people. So this dead person appears in my dream as part of a very elaborate game of some sort of sabotage, accident, and death that was to be blamed on me or something. As it turns out, then I found her very much alive. I said, why did you participate in this theatrical game? Which to us would be like reality, okay? And she said, do you like the North Pole? And then I said, look, we already won at the cross. We won. It's over. So here she is. A, who She died a few years ago of lupus. She's in the astral plane. This is uh, Her name is uh, Bonnie. She's in the astral plane, thinking she's alive, still playing the game, still doing what she's told. She did not invent it. Because she doesn't want to go to the North Pole, which means social ostracization, as that's what she means by that. That's a joke. That's being sarcastic on her part. Okay. So, um, you know, there she is, very much alive in the astral plane. And then I saw all around me, all the dead, and they were all clamoring for satanic rule. And the same rules are applying in the astral plane as on Earth. And they're very much alive trying to get in here with the promise of their savior, the aliens, that they will come into the earth and occupy it once again. That they will be resurrected. If they play the game, they are still, the dead are returning in droves and still they play the game and no they are not deceived and ignorant no it isn't Lord forgive them for they know not what they do they know exactly what they're doing and did know before they died and continue it even after death you would have been proud of me because I you know, basically stood my ground and stated my case for Christ and stated the cross and pled the blood and I did it all. I did it all in their presence and I did not back down or waver one bit because they're just wrong. You know, this was resolved at the cross a long time ago. They lost. They're not going to be resurrected. They're not that, they're deceived. But they're still playing the game and still harassing you as dead people coming into your dreams and into your life and trying to ruin your life. So I call it the return of the dead people because uh, this is the first wave of the alien invasion. It's going to be the realm of the dead coming to earth. That is, while they can't live as spirits where you'd see them, they would have to, yes, occupy various weak individuals and live again that way. And that's being allowed by God. And I don't know why he's allowing it. I suppose this is the big battle of the heavens coming to earth. And the astral plane is as much in the heavens as anything else. So it's the, the, the realm of the dead. The dead are going to occupy all the vessels that should not live in the first place. Not the saints of God. It's not to be concerned with you. But they will be a new force. If you want to call it an alien invasion, by all means. When you say possessed by demons, no, they're not possessed by demons. They're possessed by dead people. And that has begun. And I'm claiming it as a prophetic utterance right now as truth. And, you know, discern it. 
take it to the Lord, take it to the Papa, ask him if I'm full of you know what. And that's the only way you're going to be able to detect it. Of course, you'll be keen and sharpened in your own senses to be looking and look out for this sort of thing. Um, it's very dangerous. They're very nasty. Um, and they can they jump from person to person? They can jump from person to person as well. Just exactly behaving as demons behave. They can go from one person to another to another. And so you can't really catch them. But I did catch one, and I was very, I, I wasn't surprised. She looked, um, she was uh, younger, had dark hair. Her cheeks were a bit jowly, you know, but she was just really mean. I mean, death has not be, become her, okay? Death has made her a much meaner, oh, no, I don't think it was a dream like a fantasy. Oh, absolutely not. No, it was real. Yes. And I'm here to now tell you that it's, you know, this sort of thing is, I'm not the first one to report it, but I mean, I just want to give definition to what, to, to the first wave of, of uh, total incredible stuff. The first wave is the wave of the dead. Um, the dead are much stronger than animate, than familiar spirits. Familiar spirits like old ancient tree spirits and you know, ghosts and stuff haunting the earth. They don't have the power because, see, the beast gives them this power. The dragon gives them this power to be able to be animated and, and, and corp like corporeal, to be, you know, a fully functioning memory, you know, brain, language, all that, not, not just kind of in and out. No, they're in and that people will literally become another person. They will literally become another... They used to call this in the New Age circles walk-ins, remember? How Prot walked in in uh, K-Pax, played by Kevin Spacey, which was a movie about demonic possession, right? And it dealt with aliens. Oh, wow, gee, what a concept. Wonder where they got that. And um, basically, the, the giveaway was the fact that this Prot guy didn't have a body wherever he came from. He had to possess somebody that was going to give up theirs, you know, or if he had some kind of life form, it was some kind of a, you know, a spiritual form. But he was very good with uh, figuring out where all the stars were and, and how to go from planet to planet and whatnot. But uh, the only way he could have life was he had to possess a person. He had to inhabit a human host. Yes, it was a, a, a good warning about the alien invasion. You see, these entities even genetically engineered and modified us humans so they could easily occupy us at will, which is called conformity. Conformity brings the demon in. Don't feed the animals means, um, you know, there's no need to interact, you know, there's no need. What's your husband do? Nothing. We're just a retired. See, we can, at our age now, we can just say, well, we're just retired, wandering around and seeing our grandchildren and, you know, uh, throwing out a line to fish, whatever. Do not feed the animals. Oh, no, they'll, they're, they're, they'll get it all, all. You know, there'll be battles, but, but don't, in other words, don't encourage battles you don't need. Don't feed the animals. Here's the thing. Why would I want to um, destroy them with with vengeance? I'm talking about destroying the entire satanic kingdom, in, including all, any, rebellion toward God whatsoever. And I'd like to slain in myself too. I don't want to see it. I want to see perfect fidelity with God, period. I do not want to see rebellion. I don't want to see sin. But sin is what created this physical world, in a, in a way, it's, it's the most strange thing in the world. The 3D world is really the prison world. The spiritual world is the freedom world. And we're taught that this is the real world. And they're actually trying to live here, possess us, manipulate us, and take over. But keeping us in prison while they possess us so that they can have a life. Us being simple hosts that they create so they can, as parasites, live and take over. 
the alien invasion is within as much as without. It has begun with the repatriation of dead people into other weaker hosts that they are taking over the first wave. This is the return of the dead people. The return of the dead, folks. It's the return of the dead, I'm telling you. But now we have to draw a line in the sand because they're coming after me. And they're coming after me because I am the opposition. Because they know that I will scream about the dead living again. And the dead are looking for, um, they're looking for fit extensions, if you will. They are looking for people to possess right now. They weren't two weeks ago. They weren't a month ago. They weren't two, five, seven, eight, ten, twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand years ago. They are today. Now, my thing is, I've, I've pinned the apocalypse on one event. The birth of the man-child. I think that is the apocalypse. I think that is really, you know, kind of like the precursor of the New Jerusalem and the rest of it. I think that's the apocalypse. I think in the midst of all the judgments and all the thunders and vials and jars and whatever is being thrown at humanity and a third of the sea and the fish and the life and people and whatnot uh, and, and, and scorching the earth and scorpions and all these horrors that come to the earth, um, you've got this birth of the man-child against all odds. So frightening an event is that, that uh, a third of the angels are drawn um, by the dragon to go into total battle with this thing, the man-child that is totally protected and um, as you and I are protected. So I, I see the birth of the man-child despite all odds against it, despite, despite thousands of years of doing everything they could possibly do to prevent the man-child from being born. For thousands of years, it did not work. So as you have the dead being released, you have the man-child being released, so I can confirm in a sense. If I feed the animals, it's like, don't give them extra ammunition for them to shoot you in the head. I mean, is that so hard to, to, to understand? You can't just go out in the world and just be whatever you want and do whatever you want. That's just not the way it's going to work. Because it's not, you weren't born in Disneyland. It's not fantasy land. You know, there's a battle on, you're behind enemy lines, you don't feed the animals. Can't you understand that particular obedience thing? Do you have to go out and tell everyone everything about your life? Do you owe it to them to report to them who you are, what you do, where you came from, what you believe? Absolutely not. There's no reason for you to give them any of that information whatsoever. And that's why people are being broken down and traumatized so they can be taken over. Not necessarily by demons but by the dead, which is also a, I'm here to tell you that the ceremony of the rising of the dead was held somewhere in Europe by witches, by practitioners and sorcerers, and they've conjured this whole thing, and it's also tied in with all the pyramids and the obelisks and all that, to go ahead and, and have this event, so I I guess they're getting ready for World War Three, Four, whatever. They're getting ready to tear it up, baby. They're getting ready to really put the hammer down and to create mass death for their sacrifice. But I cannot stress enough uh, the need for you to be girded up every day, full spiritual armor on at all times, because when these people are possessed by the dead, the dead are coming also with knowledge of who, holy cow, the dead are coming with assignments and kill orders to kill you. They know your name. They know your lang. They can speak other languages. They know your language. They know your birth date. They know where you work. They know everything about you. And they're coming, you know, to a theater or drive-in near you. And yes, they'll they'll speak out of one person's mouth and then jump to another. Very similar to what's going on now with the demons, but it's different. It's more personal, more in your face, because these are familiar people. These are people that you knew that died, who are coming back to get you, who want to take you to the realm of 